time jobs. Here are your chic boutique handbooks. I suggest you study them for your interviews. Huh? Interviews? Handbooks? Um, couldn't you just mm. give us the jobs? I mean, we're like totally your best mm. customers. Yeah, right. You and every other girl in Beverly Hills. Huh? Looks like you girls have some competition. <laughs> Come on, Alex. Nothing is going to get in the way of us becoming supermodels. We have some serious studying to do. <laughs> Is it me, or does the way we get whooped sometimes defy the laws of physics? To mention the laws of etiquette. Time to focus, ladies. We're currently en route to London to capture some criminals who have stolen the world's largest supply of diamonds. And now, for your gadgets. For this mission, we have helmets with infrared capability, titanium drill heel boots, laser lipstick, and a new gadget that Whoop Labs just invented, anti-gravity propulsion rings. Good luck, ladies, and remember, Whoop is counting on you.
Out of my way. Excuse us. So, um, I'll talk to you later then? Did you guys see that creepy tattoo? Sorry, Sam. I was too busy watching out for Clover's drool. So what do we do now, Jerry? Well, it looks like we're no longer needed here. I guess we should all go home. We're an incredible new anti-crime organization just captured heavily armed diamond smugglers. This is too weird. The spy was virtually unknown before today, and now they're all over the news. Well, I personally think we should be glad that another organization almost as good as Whoop and super cute is around to pick up some of the slack. Yeah, having Spy around gives us more free time, which I totally need if I'm ever going to memorize this chic boutique handbook. Now let's see. Manager is out, the cash register won't open, and we've run out of brown suede chic pumps. What do you do? Uh, tell everyone we're closed? No, Alex. It's a trick question. Chic boutique doesn't sell any color but black. Oh, right. I knew that. I think. Huh? Sorry to interrupt you girls, but we have an emergency. We've just received an advance tip that a weapons plant in Los Alamos, New Mexico is about to be infiltrated. So much for more free time. Liver. Yeah, maybe Spy is better than Whoop. Come on, guys. I guess there's no reason to stay around here. I don't know about you guys, but I am so glad to be back at school. This whole Spy thing is totally weirding me out. And it just got even weirder. All right, it's official. The whole world has gone insane. Let me guess. You guys didn't know it was Spy Appreciation Day? <laughs> it is, like, so typical of you losers to be out of the loop. Spy Appreciation Day? Hey, everyone! Spy just saw the major coup on San Banana Island! Spy is so cool. I don't get it. Why didn't Jerry call us about the coup on San Banana? Well, it could have something to do with the fact that Jerry's line has been totally disconnected. Jer, what's going on? I'm afraid I have some bad news, girls. Huh? Spy's efficiency has put Whoop out of business. What? How is that even possible? The fact is, um, Spy just outspied us. Does that mean we're not spies anymore? I'm afraid so. In fact, We'll probably never see each other again. Oh. Wow. Even though you were a major pain sometimes, Jer, we're totally going to miss you. Yes. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got something in my eye. that looks familiar. Coming, Sam? You guys go ahead. I'll catch up to you later. Suit yourself. Mm -hmm. 
might as well get home and try on our outfits for our chic boutique interviews. I guess. I mean, it's not like we've got anything else to do. This image magnification machine should give me some answers. Just as I thought. These tattoos are identical. Now to test their voices. Out of my way. I've gotten away with it too. Listened again at the same pitch. My way. Away with it. Away with it. Bingo. With the same person. I think this calls for a visit to spy. <laughs> The world is at our mercy. It's time to go to phase two. Prepare the jets. Right away, boss. I totally can't decide between this black silk top and wool skirt, or this black wool top and silk skirt. Hello, Earth to Alice. Sorry, Clover. I guess I'm still in shock about the whole whoop thing. Well, snap out of it. We've got a major fashion crisis going on here. Hello? Hmm? Clover, it's Sam. Spy is up to something really evil. You guys have to come to their headquarters right away. Look, Sam, you're like totally going to have to let go of this whole spy thing. It's like so not healthy. Well, Clover, you have to listen to me. <laughs> Sam? I think Sam's officially gone off the deep end. You better stop her before she does something crazy. Uh, hello. Jets are ready, boss. Excellent. Well, what have we here? It looks like we're about to have more guests. I'm a very busy woman, so please, tell me quickly what it is that I can do for you girls. Well, you see, our friend Sam has this crazy idea that you guys are evil. Actually, our friend Sam is having a little trouble coping with not being a spy huh? anymore. Huh? And, well, we're just wondering if you've seen her around. No. Now, if you'll excuse me. Clover, look. It's Sam's comp powder. In that case, we'd better get going.
had a sudden emergency in Siberia. Siberia? <laughs> afraid to hand it in. I'm just not sure if it's good enough. I love poetry and all, but I'm so afraid of rejection. Really? What a coincidence! I love poetry and I'm totally afraid of rejection too. Then you must be afraid all the time. Hey, maybe after you write your poem, we could get together and give each other constructive criticism. Kind of like a study date. Did you say date? See you Saturday night. Toodles, Mandy. I'll let you know how our date turns out. Oh! Ooh! A poetry date? Don't bother. Sounds about as thrilling as watching nail polish dry. Oh! <laughs> so, what were you saying, Alice? Just that every time David's around, you completely ignore her. Oh, that reminds me. I better call my personal shopper and tell her to find the perfect outfit for my date with David. Evil cell phone battery. How can you betray me at a time like this? Come on. May I? Whoa! He'll call you back. Okay, now, how do you even use one of these things? Just put a quarter in the... I don't have time to get whooped right now. I have an urgent call to make. Great. Now I'll never learn how to use a payphone. Hello, girls. Hi, Hi Jerry. Jerry. Jer, can't you use other whoop agents? I have a date with David and... No time, Clover. I need you girls to investigate a series of mysterious and violent abductions. Fortunately, one intended victim managed to escape an attack in his own home. And you want us to pay that person a visit? Correct. Oh, and before I forget... You are cordially invited to the annual Whoop Company picnic to be held at the Beijing Zoo. <gasps> Sounds fun! Hmm, I wonder if it's too tacky to wear a leopard skin skirt. As long as it's fake, I don't think the leopards will mind. By the way, attendance to the picnic is mandatory. In that case, I'll RSVP now. Me too. This totally reeks. The picnic is the same day as my date with David. There, there. Boys come and go, but a Whoop is forever. Now, here are your gadgets. Tortoise shell magnifying shades, faux snakeskin parachute purse, net blaster mascara brush, scanner watch, and the Noggerhide biker chic lasso belt. 
Ooh, this'll go great with my new pants. <laughs> According to Whoop, the man is a zoologist named Jacob. Huh? Ew, look at these nasty scratch marks. Maybe Jacob should manicure his fingernails. Fingernails? More like claws. Who, who is it? We're here to investigate your attack. Uh, sorry about that. After the attack, I just can't take any chances. Do you have any idea who would have wanted to attack you? Well, I don't have any enemies to speak of. Everyone likes me. I'm usually the life of the party. Remind me to skip that party. One thing's for sure, though. The person who attacked was cold and heartless. He wore a fur coat made from a very rare South American polar bear. Heartless huh? and unfashionable. Fur is so out. Do you mind if we come in and look around? Sure, no problem. I'll make us some tea. It's about the only thing that calms my nerves these days. So, did you tell David you have to call up the date yet? No, and I'm really dreading it. I know how sensitive he is about rejection. Oh well, here goes nothing. Hi, David, it's Clover. Listen, there's something I need to tell you. Hey, Clover, check out this poem I wrote about our date. You wrote a poem about our date? Clover, Clover, you are perfection. I can't wait for our date. <laughs> I hate rejection. <laughs> so, let me hear one of your poems. Oh, uh, you know what, David? Um, I'm going through the canyon. I'm losing you. <sighs> huh? Could this day possibly get any worse? <laughs> Or should I say, what abducted him? Poor Jacob. All that's left of him is his shoe. This might actually tell us something. I'll check it out with the tortoiseshell magnifying shades. Hey, there's a blonde hair on it. Let's run it through the scanner watch. It's a hair from the same rare polar bear Jacob was talking about. So it must have been the same person who attacked Jacob the last time, because they're still wearing the same coat. Judging from the damage to that wall, I'd say it was the bear itself. Hello? We're in the middle of a city. Last and new polar bears lived in the snow. Let's call Jerry to see if there are any polar bears in captivity around here. Hello, girls. Hi, Jer. Do you have any record of South American polar bears in captivity? Let's see. Oh, yes, there was one. But it recently escaped. And only it was at the Beijing Zoo, the same place we're having our company picnic. Which reminds me, do you think we should serve potato salad or ambrosia at the picnic? <sighs> Neither. Thanks, Jer. Gotta run. But, but I... I got it, I got it. If I tell David our date is off in a poem, he won't take it so hard. What rhymes with, I'm dumping you? Uh... Merci beaucoup. Can you forget about your poem? We've got to get to the bottom of this case. All my new volunteers, I'm glad you're here. Three of my most reliable staff members haven't shown up for work at all this week. That's weird. All the people who are missing seem to be animal workers. We're glad to be able to help. Did you see that? He offered me the ball all by himself. Good monkey. Actually, Sherman is a gorilla. They're a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Now, would you girls mind cleaning the polar bear and condor cages? Neither have been tended to since the animals went missing last week. Maybe this is why the employees stopped showing up for work. There's no sign of forced entry or exit, and no sign of foul play. Maybe it was an inside job. Belt. Ah! Gotcha. Ah. 
be so quick to congratulate yourself. I'm far too intelligent to fall prey to your foolish little gadget. <laughs> Ta-ta, ladies. I'll see myself out. Okay, that was really unexpected. Huh? Now who's the intelligent one? I do not have time for your shenanigans. Go! Or that gorilla just drove off in a car with Alex. I hope he's a better driver than she is. This is crazy. One second, a man was holding this device to Sherman's head. The next, Sherman was behaving with human dexterity. I wonder if this thing is responsible for the way Sherman was acting. Okay, I want to know who's responsible for that ape slobbering all over me. Ah, if he can drive, he can certainly pay the dry cleaning bill. I better hurry back inside and make sure the rest of the animals are secure. And we better contact the authorities about Alex. Sam, I know you're really into recycling, but if you need a tissue, just ask. Let's run this through the scanner watch. Maybe we'll get a clue from Sherman's saliva. Look, it says Sherman's DNA is half human, half simian. Weird. Let's check it out with Jerry. Hello, girls. What do you think of coleslaw as a side dish? I think we have more important issues than side dishes. A talking, driving gorilla just kidnapped Alex. Yeah, we just sent you a very strange DNA sample. Well, I see what you mean by strange. The human half of the DNA belongs to a zoologist. I don't know who the gorilla half belongs to. Jer, do you have an address for the zoologist? I've just forwarded it to your compounder. And girls, need I remind you that I want Alex safely returned and all of this figured out quickly. You need not remind us, Jerry. Okay, let's pay a visit to the zoologist and see why his DNA is in Sherman's bed. I hope Alex is okay. You don't think Sherman would hurt her, do you? Clover, hello? Sorry. Talking with Jer about the picnic reminded me that I still have to cancel on David. Just tell him you have to reschedule. That way he won't feel rejected and you still get to go out with him. Reschedule, of course! And if I tell him in a rhyme, he probably won't mind. <laughs> Hello, hello. I hope you're not feeling low. David here. Hi, David. It's Clover. I have something important to tell you before this call is over. Sorry, but I can't keep our date. Can I move it to next Friday so I won't be late? Wow, you are a good poet. Unfortunately, I can't make it next Friday. I've got a date with Mandy that night. <laughs> with Mandy? <laughs> Never mind. Saturday's just dandy. <laughs> from escaping the zoo. We were trying to save you. A city street is no place for a mu <sighs> a gorilla. <sighs> Pipe down, Missy. It appears my plan is coming together quite nicely. I must congratulate you, Sherman, on a job well done. Thank you, sir. Without your selfless dedication, I would still be living like an animal. This place looks like it's seen better days. Something about this veterinary hospital smells fishy to me. Huh. Check out those paw prints. What kind of animal walks on only two paws instead of four? Another locked door. I guess the only way to go is up. Grab hold. Mental note to self, never climb through a chicken wearing dry clean only clothes. Sam! Clover! The talking animals put us in here, and they did something weird to Jacob and the others. Don't worry. We'll get you guys out in a jiff. Not so fast, ladies. Hey! Pause off, you creeps! Get comfortable, girls. This is your new home from now on. 
I don't know what you think you're doing, pal, but I wouldn't count on us being in here for long. I am not your pal. My name is Dr. Fox, and what I think I'm doing is empowering animals to rise up against the humans who've kept them in cages for so long. Um, excuse me, am I the only one who thinks it's a tad ironic that this wacko's name is Dr. Fox? Is it your DNA mixed with Sherman's? Credit my ingenious DNA transformer, which allows animals to assimilate their DNA with mine, thus increasing their brain power. Now, I'll transfer my DNA to this ordinary lab mouse. Who are you calling ordinary? Impressive, is it not? It also works in reverse. That is to say, I can administer animal DNA to humans. So you turned Jacob and the others into animals? That's just cruel! Now, go forth and carry out our mission! There's a new mission now, Dr. Fox. To put all humans in cages, but not before turning all of you into animals. Wait, this isn't fair. I liberated you! That's bizarre and creepy. And yet, somehow it's an improvement. Come, my brothers. Time to free our friends and embark on total domination of the human race. Turn them all into animals. Apparently, the animal's aggression is a side effect Fox didn't count on. <laughs> Easy does it, you brute! Quiet! It'll all be over soon. <laughs> Gotta get out of here and do something before Clover gets turned into who knows what! There's our ticket out. We just have to get him over here. I don't know what I would have done if I Oh, looks like you were administered a little canine DNA. Uh, what am I going to do now? I have a date with David coming up. We'll deal with it later. Right now, we have to stop those animals. Sherman, it's great to finally be liberated. Don't mention it. Power to the animals! <laughs>
what's up. Alex. Now let's return the rest of the animals to normal. And you too, Clover. <sighs> Congratulations, girls, on another job well done. The whole experience made us realize how unhappy the animals were in their cages. I'm glad they decided to turn the zoo into a nature preserve. Now everyone is happy. Everyone except Clover, that is. I guess I have no choice. I have to call David and finally cancel our date. Hello? Hi, David. It's Clover. Listen, I have some bad news. So do I. I don't know how to tell you this, Clover, but I have to cancel our date. You do? Yeah. I forgot that I volunteered to work at the Beverly Hills Animal Shelter today. Sorry. I can't believe it! I feel so, so rejected! Well, gotta go. The animals are waiting. So, 
It's gonna be pretty rough. Uh, not if you're there to protect me. No offense, but I think you're a little high maintenance for the type of extreme sports I'm into. Ouch. That's gonna leave a mark. High maintenance? Excuse me! Have you ever been bargain hunting? As far as sports go, it's totally extreme. Sorry, Clover. See you later, girls. <laughs> well, would it make a difference if I told you I was an international sports Clover? Clover? I can't believe you were going to tell him who you really are. Oh, who cares? What fun is it being a spy if we can't tell anyone? Where's the payoff? We should at least get, like, free facials or something. <sighs> the payoff is keeping the world safe, Clover. And you know telling David could put him in serious danger. I know. I just want a hottie to call my own. If there's only some way. Stop everything. Idea forming. <sighs> Clover, you don't know the first thing about rock climbing. Please. I was like the queen of my step aerobics class. How do I look? Like you're about to be shot out of a cannon. Chances are we won't even get to the rock climbing. David will take one look at me in this outfit and say... <gasps> Sorry to pull you away from your shopping, girls, but I'm afraid it's a matter of great... Oh, Clover, what on earth are you wearing? You look like a pink crash test dummy. It's... oh, forget it. Let's just get to the mission. Right. Two days ago, a Canadian news team disappeared while investigating a remote mountain region in western Canada near Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan what? Saskatchewan. It's a place. Like the mall. <laughs> Yes. Over the last year, 25 local farmers and loggers have vanished from these mountains. The reporters were there looking for answers. Any clues? Only this distress call we picked up on a Whoop satellite from one of the reporters, Wade Ridgely. Please, anyone, there's something in the forest, it's all around! Okay, scary. Yes, something in those mountains could pose a threat to world safety. Whoop wants you spies to go undercover as campers to find out what it is. Campers? Like in pitching tents and stalking our own kill? Can't you put us up in a nice resort nearby? Hmm. Let me think about that. No. Now, let's get a look at your gadgets. Mostly standard issue, there's your heat sensor 6000 infrared motion detector sunglasses, jetpack backpack, Parachutes and something new I think you girls will enjoy. Boomerang buzzsaw barrettes. They come in three styles, panda, furry kitty, and unicorn. Remember, this is a dangerous mission, girls. Be careful. Don't worry, Jer. We can totally handle the wilderness. It's all about teamwork. I, I call, call the panda! panda. Give me that! Oh, give me Disappeared. I say we set up camp here and start looking for clues. Sounds like a plan. Where's Clover? Clover! Okay, I don't know who designed this forest, but it needs an escalator. And could the woods be any dirtier? Don't worry, Clover. We brought plenty of water to wash up. Right, Alex? I... I thought you brought the water. Me? No, I'm the guide. The guide never brings the water. Who came up with that rule? The camping fairy? Well, why couldn't Clover bring it? She brought everything else. And more. Hey, stop! We'll find water tomorrow. It's no big deal. Let's just set up camp and get a fire going before it gets cold. Who's got the matches? <laughs> Anyone got two stones? We can bang them together and the sparks would make fire. I've got a pair of clocks. Hey, I found some packages of hot chocolate. Hi, it's 
Clover. Uh, I just called to tell you I'm totally camping in the mountains uh, and freezing to death, I might add. Pretty extreme, huh? Uh, uh Clover? Uh, I'm a little busy and I don't want to cramp up. I knew you'd think so. So, what do you say? Can I come along on your climb this weekend if I'm still alive? Sure. Uh, whatever. Ah! <laughs> You know, I think this whole outdoor thing is starting to grow on me. Uh, where's the nearest club? Oh! Uh, what was that? Get your sunglasses! Maybe it was the wind? Um, that doesn't sound like the wind. According to the glasses, there's nothing out there. Just stay calm. Maybe it'll go away. down so we can get a closer look. Ew! So that's what's going on in this forest. Someone's growing men in pods. Hmm, not a bad idea, really. Wait, it's Wade huh? Ridgely. Uh. Oh. What happened? Where am I? You and your crew were attacked. You're safe now. Who did this to you? I don't know, but they were everywhere. And there was this sound. <gasps> Clover, help me get him up. <gasps> Wait, did you hear something? Where's Alex? Alex! <laughs> That's the sound! That's the sound it makes when it comes for you. When what comes? Oh my gosh! Look! It's the forest! It's alive! We gotta get out of here! No! Alex! We have to find... Jerry, we're in trouble. It's the forest that's been abducted. 
distracting people. You've got to get us out of here. Yes, yes, of course. I'll send a jet immediately. It may take some time. We don't have time. Hurry! Seal the windows. We can't let them in. Professor Rasputin Zero. Zero? The conservationist? Hey, when we were investigating the disappearances, we came across that name. You were fighting to preserve this forest. I still am. By turning it into bloodthirsty Christmas trees? What's up with that, Scrooge? I merely gave the trees the ability to fight back with a bit of genetic engineering. The farmers and loggers of this region have been destroying the forest for years. And I thought it was time for a little payback. A little human snack to enjoy. So that's why Wade was in that cocoon. The trees were feeding off him. Yes. The human life force gives the forest its strength and intelligence. Listen, Freak Show. Thanks for the trip down Psycho Gardener Lane. But your trees made a mistake when they grabbed our friend. We want Alex and the others back. I don't know.
there you are, girls. You'll be happy to know Whoop agents will be there any moment. They've already apprehended Professor Zero. What about Wade? He's fine. On his way home safely to his wife and children. Wife and... Hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> so, how did you spies enjoy your time in the wild? I hope it wasn't too rough. Well, we were nearly thrown from a cliff, crushed by a helicopter, and digested by killer trees. Piece of cake, Jer. Oh, excellent, because it looks like the Whoop Jets are going to be pretty full getting the missing people to safety. You spies are going to have to hike down on your own. I wonder if they got that escalator built yet. <laughs> Where is David? He's gonna freak when he finds out I can make our climbing date. You're not still thinking about telling him, you know, who we are? No need. After the way I handled the tree queen, I've totally proved I'm as extreme as he is. <gasps> there he is. Wish me luck. <laughs> Late, I... uh, what happened? Street luge accident. It was awful. Here's your breakfast, David. I blended up your favorites, eggs, sausage, and grits. Mandy's just been the greatest, like my own personal nurse. She's exactly what I need right now. Somebody calm and gentle, not extreme at all. <laughs> Easy was that? 
sound? Totally easy. Um, if you're some sort of genius. Yeah, I mean, who can remember all that scientific mumbo jumbo water freezes at 32 degrees stuff? <laughs> Not me. Mr. Roberts said I have to do an extra credit assignment just to pass the class. Don't worry, Alex. This will work out in the end just like everything else. Nice try, Sammy. But Whoop can't cover me on this one. No, but we can. That's right. We'll make sure your extra credit assignment's the best Roberts has ever seen. Plus, I'll let you borrow my favorite study sweater. Thanks, girls. You're the best. See? Nothing can pull us away from helping you. <laughs> There's a phenomenon sweeping some of the world's largest cities. It's already struck Tokyo and New York. I don't have time for a geography lesson, Jerry. I have an extra credit assignment due. I'm sorry, Alex, but this is urgent. Take a look. That's just it. I am playing this at regular speed. Activities in these major metropolitan areas have been slowed at an alarming rate. Slow? Why would anyone want to do that? That is what you're going to find out. And to do so, you'll have your M-ray contact lenses, fingerprint tracer gloves, Ugh, and there goes the manicure. A pair of black leather knee-high rocket-powered inline boots, cashmere deflector shields, and if you're up to it, the Wind Tunnel 3000 Laser Tornado Blast Hairdryer. I promise I'll do better this time. That's what I like to hear. I have complete faith in you, Alex. Now, allow me to introduce Brittany. Our newest group agent. Hi. What? Pleased to meet you. How's it going? My, no time to get acquainted. Another city is being hit by this phenomenon. Huh? Good luck, girls. <laughs> Welcome to the team. <laughs> said cheerleading was a waste of time. <laughs> Not me. I'm captain of my school squad. Awesome. I knew we had a lot in common. In fact, the only thing that can pull me away from practice is a good chess game. No way. I love chess. Enough chit-chat, girls. We have a seriously freaky situation on our hands, remember? Right. We better investigate. Again? 
Yes, again. Not to worry, Alex. With a clue like this, he's ours. There's a clue? Yeah, come take a look. Why? It's not like I'm helping. Of course you are. Hello, who brought my latte this morning? I've completely lost it. Oh, don't be silly, Alex. We're a team. We've got each other's backs. And besides, your plan would have been awesome if it worked. <laughs> Could you just stop being so nice? Okay, let's get these clues to Whoop. We need to find this wacko soon. Where's Alex? She was just beside us. <laughs> we did a preliminary search of the shoe print on our way back, but couldn't find any manufacturers. Hmm. Norse logo. Interesting. Most likely a Scandinavian manufacturer. And the size, so long and narrow, must be custom made. So, what went wrong in Mexico City? Uh, <clears throat> Girls, what happened? Huh? Oh. It was me, okay? I blew it again. It was all my fault. Uh, oh, my. I can't do this anymore. I quit. <gasps> quit? You can't quit? Yeah, we need you, Alex. We're a team. You don't need me. You have her. Now, if you'll all excuse me, I have an extra credit assignment to do. Mary, you can't just let her walk out. Oh. I don't want to see you go either, but we have a case to solve. And soon, before the entire world grinds to a halt. Is custom made. Only three pair have been ordered. Girls. It's no use, Jer. We can't concentrate without Alex. She's like the cherry on top of the sundae. The foam on a latte. It's just not the same without her. I know it's difficult, but the sooner we solve this, the sooner we can try to convince her to return. You're right. Let's do this one for Alex. Excellent. Now, one pair was ordered by a female basketball player. No, it wasn't a female basketball player. Another by a clown? That leaves a scientist. In Greenland, the Viking lab. Greenland? So it's like hot there, right? Not for personal hygiene, Alex. It's for your extra credit assignment. I want you to figure out how to make the soap float. That's easy. We can use water wings. Without using anything but the soap. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. Uh... It has to do with molecules. Molecules? Let's take a look inside. No one's here. Let's go in. Over 
3mx times z cubed divided by yx over mz equals something about molecules. Check it out! Is that like the biggest microwave oven you've ever seen? I don't think it's a microwave oven exactly. Uh... <laughs> Low power three seconds, molecules slow by 10%. High power, two seconds. Molecules slow by 40%. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. That thing slows down molecules. Hmm, I wonder what it does to popcorn. We better call Jerry. Hmm, if you insist. Uh, Elizabeth, and then you can call me Jerry. This is so unlike him not to answer. Maybe he got called away on an emergency. Or maybe he left his wallet phone in his other pants again. Visitors. How delightful. Welcome. Welcome to my lab. My name is Willard. I'm not a mind reader. You are? In a rush. Gotta go. In a rush. That's the problem with the world today. Yeah, that's the problem. No. You can't have a raise. You work too slow. No, Willard, you can't be on the track team. You run too slow. Will no more. What are you talking about, Willard? I'm talking about taking control. No one can accuse me of being slow now. Everyone else is too fast. My own kids don't even have time for me. You're a mad scientist. What do you expect? Ex-mad scientist? Now I'm just angry. I wasted years on cloning research. Then I realized I could win the race of time by slowing molecules. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Well, slow this. the molecules. Let's just see how much.
why you're moving in slow motion. But I know how to fix it. With heat. Hey! Oopsie. No! I'm afraid your books are overdue. The problem is yours, lady, because I ain't paying no fines. But that's our policy. Too bad. Ha, 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 ha. 
is that? The brand new scalding hot M Channel VJ. Isn't he a dream? Hi guys, Hanson Carter here with an exciting announcement for you. I'm looking for a special someone to co-host an upcoming show with me at the M Channel. All you have to do is send in a catchy and convincing audition tape and who knows, within weeks, you and I could be working together. Oh, this is too perfect. I'll send in my tape, get the job, Anson will fall in love with me, and we'll spend the rest of our lives together. <laughs> Okay, Clover, I totally support free expression and all, but you are in public. I'm going home right now to work on my tape. Gross. A vacuum, then a garbage can? Thanks, Jer. Jer? Down here. <laughs> nice duds. Are you, like, in a play or something? No, but I have some very exciting news. I am to be knighted. <gasps> knighted? Like with a sword and the queen? And you'll be a sir? Yes, yes, and um, yes. It's quite an unexpected honor. So can we come? I've always wanted to meet the queen. Tragically, you cannot, though you three will be traveling to England. England? But I can't! I have a very important, possibly life-altering video to star in. Well, I'm afraid it'll have to wait. Right now, I have an assignment for you. In the city of Liverpool, there have been a rash of odd occurrences. People's personalities have suddenly changed. Observe. This mild-mannered librarian started acting like a professional wrestler. <laughs> And this prominent surgeon can't stop dancing. And this army general now treats his officers like a kindergarten class. Freak? Especially since some of these people are very important. Then I guess we better find out what's causing this to happen fast. Precisely. And now for your gadgets. You will be using laser lipstick, earring communicators, the hair pick lock pick, suction cup bottomed go-go boots, and bags. Bags? Vapor emitting gloves. Wear them at your own factory risk. Ew! Nast! Indeed. And now you're off. As am I. So, Anson, remember, my name is Clover, and your search is over. You found your M Channel guest gal. I'm hipper than hip, hopper than hop. I walk the walk, and baby, I talk the talk. Mwah. Awesome, Clover! Thanks! Now all I have to do is send in the tape and keep my fingers crossed. Good, because right now it's spy time. Um, are you sure you're a librarian? Because, sister, you are way buff. It wasn't until last Thursday, the day my whole life changed. What do you mean? What happened? I was working at the library when I saw this bright light. Then all of a sudden, I wasn't a wimp anymore. I was a wrestler. It was amazing. I'm afraid I don't follow. The only thing I lifted before was books and my afternoon cup of tea. Now I can bench 150. I've never matched more, and I'd get some bloke from Kensington. Want to come? Sounds like a blast, but unfortunately, we'll have to take a rain check. Suit yourself. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go work on my abs. <laughs> What a freak show. I mean, how often do you meet a wrestling librarian? Yeah, about as often as you meet a high school girl involved in international espionage. Okay, bad example. Hey, check it out. Pro wrestler Birmingham Brawler quits. Wants simpler, quieter life. He probably got dropped on his head one too many times. Huh? So? Either that or his personality's changed. What are you saying, Sammy? That this is way too weird to be a coincidence. Yes, well, wrestling was my old life, you see. Now I prefer a good book. But you're like the Birmingham brawler, dude. A butt-kicking powerhouse of strength. Hmm? Oh, yes, well, I was the Birmingham roller until last Thursday when I discovered Trollope, Emily Bronte, and Balzac. 
You don't happen to know the head librarian at the Liverpool Library, do you? Why, no, but I'd so love to meet her. We probably have a great deal in common. Well, thanks for your time. Keep digging on those books. Oh, yes, I shall. Well, cheerio, my dears. Just when I thought the first freak show was good, the second one was even better. It's like the game we used to play in nursery school, opposite day. You're absolutely right, Alex. It's like they've switched personalities. But how is that possible? Especially since they don't even know each other. I'm not sure, but we're gonna find out. It's totally amazing. Even in the most heinous of tweeds, I still look fabulous. So what are we looking for exactly? The librarian's date book. I want to know what's so special about last Thursday, and what her connection is to our wrestler. Hmm. Huh? According to this, she met with, uh, Dr. Gray on Thursday morning. Says here he's a shrink. He treats doctors, generals, teachers, and even celebrities like the Birmingham Brawler. Bingo! We have our connection. It's time to pay the good doctor a visit. Okay, so this is like the opposite of a normal place to live. Shrinks are so dramatic. Looks like nobody's home. I say we let ourselves in. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's split up and see what we find. Use your ear and communicators to stay in touch. Well, besides the criminally tacky decor, everything looks pretty normal to me. Same here. How about on your end, Alex? Just a stuffy room filled with books. Hmm? Come to think of it, that wrestler would love it here. Alex? Alex, are you okay? She's not answering. Let's find her. <laughs> Sammy? Can you hear me? Hello? Oh, this is so not good. So, I went over the falls in the barrel, caught the hoodlum on his fancy boat, and now he's shut away for years. Oh my, what a story! How thrilling! Oh, excuse me, Your Majesty, I'll be just a minute. Hello? Jer, it's Clover, and I have a big time problem. Alex and Sam just disappeared. I need you to help me ASAP. <laughs> yes, well, I'm afraid that might not be possible just huh? this instant. I not possible? Hello? If you don't get here quick, I may be the next to vanish. And then it's goodbye, M Channel, goodbye, Anson, and goodbye, Perfect Life. <laughs> Calm down, I have your coordinates. I'll be there as soon as I can. Everything all right? <laughs> oh, yes, right as rain. Say, do you mind pointing me in the direction of the loo? <gasps> uh, Desperate times call for desperate measures. So, what is this place? The home of our prime suspect, Dr. Gray. He's switching the personalities of his patients. We just don't know how or why. Hmm. Very interesting. If by interesting you mean gaudy, then yeah, I'm with you. Not the decor, Clover. I'm talking about that. What is it? A pendant. The kind used in hypnotherapy. Uh, 
It's really heavy, and not in the cool 60s way. Well, that's because it's filled with some sort of circuitry. I wonder what this button does. It activates huh? my latest research tool. The highly potent and highly controversial behavioral adjuster. Dr. Gray, I presume. <laughs> it allows me to alter the persona of anyone I see fit. So far, I've only used it on my annoying patients. But I assume that it works just as well on intruders. So, what is your deal? Why are you messing with people's personalities? Because I'm sick of listening to them complain. I figure if they learn to walk in each other's shoes, maybe they'll see life with a whole new perspective. Plus, it's a great deal of fun. Okay, kind of an extreme approach to therapy. Sometimes it's necessary to be extreme. In fact, since my experiment's going so well, I'm planning on going global, starting with the President of the United States. I think he could learn a lot from a rodeo clown. You'll never get away with it. We'll see about that. Get rid of them! <laughs> Get a lot worse. That's only the half of it. In a matter of moments, your cells will be teeming with rats. They will starve for days. Enjoy the psychological torture. Huh? Okay, do guide me with a spoon. This is seriously groaning. Unhand me, vile creatures. Mercy, this is repugnant. I don't know which is scarier. The rats or those two switching personalities. Me neither. <laughs> Clover, lay the lipstick. It's in your pocket. <laughs> Brilliant thinking, Samantha. you back right now. Huh? Oh, for the love of Pete, who could be phoning at a time like this? Yes, hello? Ah, oh, delightful. I absolutely will. See then. Well, it seems I got that Anson Carter gig. They've requested my presence in Los Angeles immediately. But what about your situation? You know, the fact that you're acting like a 50-something English guy? Char, she'll just have to deal, because right now the three of us need to jet to DC before the Prez becomes a rodeo clown. <laughs> Jerry here. Oh no! I like totally forgot. I'll be there in a jiff. Later. Someone from the palace. It's nighting time. I guess that just leaves me and you. <laughs> we have to talk to the president right away. It's a matter of national security. in on you like this, sir, but it's an emergency. Yeah, an evil shrink's about to turn you into a rodeo clown. Did you say a rodeo clown? Well, this is just plum crazy. 
Trust me, crazy doesn't even begin to describe this guy. Good evening, Mr. President. It's time for your counseling session. What no glorious name are those? The shoes you'll soon be walking in. See what I mean? He's way loony. That's right. And now we're here to kick your butt. <laughs> Interesting lingo. So, uh, you ready to play some videos, guest VJ? Indubitably. Ah, what's this awful din? <laughs> Excuse me? This video. Don't tell me kids actually like this rubbish. This rubbish is fried garbage, and they're number one on the charts. Well, I must say their name is quite appropriate. Ah, well, is there anything you do like, Ms. Cranky? As far as I'm concerned, the only music worth its salt is the classical variety. Brahms, Mozart, Bach. I bet your audience would appreciate it as a welcome relief. Yeah, well, maybe we'll try it in another lifetime. Meanwhile... Oh, bother. Props on deciding to make me a knight. It's like such the unexpected treat. Even better than a shoe sale at the mall. Are you feeling okay, Mr. Lewis? Okay. I'm downright stoked, Queenie. Now let's get this party started. Oopsie. You'll never get away with this. Wanna bet? I guess we better go help the others. Good idea. And in the meantime, my men will take care of this clown. <gasps> so, I wonder how Clover and Jerry made out. Hmm. As far as I'm concerned, the only music worth its salt is the classical variety. Brahms, Mozart, I can't Bob. believe those words actually came out of my mouth. It's so embarrassing. What is embarrassing is my behavior at the palace. Not only does the queen now despise me, but my chances of ever becoming a knight are utterly nil. Oh, that's too bad, Jer. Huh? Hmm. Hello? Yeah, that's me. No way! Yeah, totally. Okay, fine. You're so not gonna believe this. Anson, the love of my life has never gotten as many calls about a guest BJ. Everyone loves the cranky girl. They want me back. Awesome! You can thank me anytime. Uh, no, I don't need to thank you, Jer. I need to switch personalities with you. Where's that behavioral gesture thingy? Oh, no. No, not in a million years. Come on, Jer! I said no. But, Jer! 